not just sex brother it was the devil that introduced sex and because sex came people who are not supposed to be in this world are here they shouldn't be here at all if the devil did not visit the garden of eden and mess up eve Cain will not be born there would have been abel uh set uh enoch uh, abraham isaac uh, jacob uh what's his name uh, all noah down through the ages all the prophets down to jesus there will be no judas no and the world will be full of the sons of god Amen. only sons of god see but because of sex now all kinds of all of them the devil put in his own seed seed of the serpent he has a seed yes. and that's why that's how they came but let's go to the scripture and give it a backing you see in genesis chapters one to prove that this is absolute truth that the prophet spoke in that uh, in that book genesis chapters one and uh, verse 26 and 27 if i'm correct genesis 1 26 and God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. The denomination stopped there. He said, You see, God said, Let us. They want to prove three gods. Verse 7 So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Listen, at this time, this creation is spirit. It's spirit. God was talking to Adam and Eve in the spirit form. Amen. They are not yet formed in the flesh. And when God made Adam, Eve was inside Adam. When God told him to increase, multiply, replenish the earth. How can Adam be having sex with himself? Adam was a man. So there was no way to have sex. Sex was not even in truth. Flesh was not yet even in the world. Before God said, replenish, increase, multiply. So God had given the command before he formed. Look at chapters 2. See where man was formed. Um, I think it's chapters 2, verse 7 and 8, if I'm correct. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the bread of life. And man became what? A living soul. See? Man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. There was no woman now, physically. First he created Adam and Eve's spirit and gave them command to increase and multiply. So there was no way the, the man could have sex with himself at all. And there, here is the man formed now from spirit into physical. Oh, something just flashed through my mind. That's what we want to marry. See, we want to marry the spirit. Virgin spirit. Not flesh. See, if you go for the flesh, you, you, you lose, you, you, you fail. You lose everything. You marry the original, the spirit. See, now that spirit was transferred into the flesh. Amen. Amen. And then, after that, in chapters 2, verse 21 and 22, I think uh, chapters uh, Genesis chapters 2 verse 21 and 22 if I'm correct and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man you don't see here where God commands the man and the woman to replenish again he has said it before see when they were just one man and in the spirit see so what will have happened was if satan did not come into the garden to seduce eve and 
thwart the whole original plan of God. What would have happened was, every one of us would have come into the world the way Jesus did. Amen. Every one of us would have come into the world the way Jesus did. See, at the right time, like John, a man sent from God. See? And you know how John was born? See? The mother and the father had lived for years. High priest and so forth. See? And all the sex and everything going on for years. Nothing. But the God sent his angel to announce that uh, Elizabeth will have a son. And the name is to be called John. See? So it's not the power of sex at all. It's the spoken word of God that brought John into the world. He was a man sent from God. See? He has to be with God and God says, John, come. Go into the world and forerun my coming. That's the way every one of us would have come into the world. At the right time, God would send your spirit into the womb of any woman he wants to. Amen. And then you are born. And you come into the world by the power of God's spirit. Not by sex. See? The children that are born by sex today are carnal, empty, buff buff. Just flesh. Nothing inside. Buff buff. You know buff buff? They are so big. But when you press it, you see there's nothing inside. That's what flesh brings. See? But the ones that come by the spirit, no matter how you press them, they are rugged. Amen. Check all of them in the Bible. They are all tough spiritual men that were born by God's spoken word. Amen. That's why, because our birth in the beginning was wrong, Jesus commanded everybody to be born the second time. Amen. See? Everybody to be born again. And only those that belong to God will be born again. And those who do not belong to God will never receive that command to be born again. Amen. Amen. We well, thank God for these questions. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I understood that our food will be ready in a few minutes. A few days for us to go and eat and come back. And uh, I don't know. We look so... Uh, do we go to the kitchen and come back? Or, or we'll just have a little something here before we go? Yes, Alright, just a little something. Just a little something and then, <coughs> then we shall go. We are going to talk about uh, uh, conditionalities of remarriage. So that we can just take this matter of marriage to, the, to an end. And forget about it. Alright. There are many... Uh, Places that Brother Branham says a man can remarry, a man can remarry. That don't mean any man can just do what he likes and go and get remarried. It has to be a Bible pattern. Amen. Now, first, the prophet told us how an engagement, engagement can be nullified. Because when a man tells a woman, I want to marry you, and the woman says, I agree, both of us are going to get married. Then that covenant is sealed. You understand? If they break that covenant, it's equal to divorce. It's equal to divorce. See? That's the one that God sees, the one that no man sees. But you notice that some engagements are not sincere. So the prophet says, if the engagement is not sincere, if it's wrong, then that woman is not bound by it or the man is not bound by it depending on who is deceiving who. Alright? Depending on who is deceiving who. And then another area that you can break up an engagement is if you are engaged to a minor. A girl that is underage. See? A girl that is underage. You just give her five nara. Oh, she's very happy. Next day, give her another five nara. She's very happy. The next time you say, I want to marry you. Oh, she's very happy. You are just playing tricks. See? That is not it at all. Then after some years, you say, well, you promised last year to marry me. And when the girl matures, she doesn't even know who you are. It's going her way. See, some people <laughs> take a little girl to train her in school with the hope of marrying her. Yeah, train, train, train. Spend all their money. And when the girl matures, she goes her way. They say, eh, you, you do me that. The girl don't know what you're talking about. See? So that also is not proper. It's not proper. 
But let's get something a little more serious from the Bible here. And the first Corinthians that we have been looking at. Like the prophet said in the message book that some people are so legalistic about it. And they say the man can only marry, only uh, remarry, only when the wife dies. Period. See? But let's, let's be sincere. Let's be sincere to ourselves. You see, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for something. And that thing is that the Pharisees like to put a burden on the people that they themselves cannot carry. See? They themselves cannot carry. And then they tie that burden and put it on the people. In in First Corinthians seven and uh, verse uh, verse seven from verse seven uh, from verse six. I'm sorry, from verse six. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. There are some things that we need to look into and take a decision that affects that situation only. It is a dangerous thing to generalize a judgment and give a blanket decision. It's wrong. See? There are some things Paul will not have said but was permitted to say it by God. He said, I'm saying this not as a command but I have permission from God to say it. See? Permission. See? This my brother, may, this my son here may have a peculiar problem about his marriage life. He comes to me. Brother, I must be honest with you. Look, 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 look what is going on in my life. See my problem. See my family life. See my past. See my present. That's okay. Go. Come back maybe next week or so. And I go to praying about it. And God gives me permission. Or God gives me revelation. Or God gives me something to tell him it's for him only. Because of the situation he finds himself. To deliver him from it. And then here's somebody down there who doesn't know what is happening. Say, well, if that brother can marry me too, well, who gave you the permission? Who gave you the revelation? Are you working? Are you copying now? Or are you, the Bible says, let's not compare ourselves with ourselves. So we must mind that. Every family has a peculiar problem. A peculiar problem. That's why Paul says, to some God has given this type of gift to others this type of gift so when you look at people with their own peculiar conditions you seek the face of God concerning them alone and nobody else should copy them search out your own now watch uh, in verse, verse uh, 7 I would that all men were even as I myself but every man had his power, a proper gift of God one after this manner and another after that. Are you following? Yeah. This is very serious. Though. Every brother, every sister has his own proper gift. And you need to approach his own problem according to his own gift. According to his own gift. You have to discover what type of problem he is passing through. What type of gift, what type of ability God has given to him. When we talk about gift, look at what is the meaning of it in verse 8. I said therefore to the unmarried, the person that is not married, huh? and widows, a widow is a woman who was married and the husband is dead. Is that right? This also must include the man that was married huh? and the wife is dead. That's a widower. Alright. It is good for them if they abide even as I. It is good for them if, if, he didn't say it's good for them to abide as I am. He said if they do, it's good for them. But why can they? Not everybody can. Not everybody can. See? I know uh, somebody asked me sometime, well, uh, what, about, what about me? My wife has gone and she's married to somebody and here I am suffering for nothing. Brother, what am I to do now? I look at this brother and I pitied him. You know, the prophet says, look, if you don't have love for somebody, don't even pray for that person. The first thing I did was think about my wife. Well, most of you know my wife. She's a wonderful woman. She's a wonderful woman. And uh, I thought about my wife. If my wife back and run away. Ah, I'm finished, too. 
You know? I mean, I thought about myself. I thought about myself. Here is this sweet lady, you know. If one day I come home, they say she has run. Now that she travels, she's coming back. She's gone. And then I go to her room, the boxes, everything disappear. Her dresses in my room are gone. Shoes gone. Everything gone. One day she's not back. Two days she's not back. I don't, the third day, I don't know if I will leave. I'm going to leave the 99. That is the church. I'm going to look for her. <laughs> I'm telling you. But Jerry and Gabe, them can carry on till I come. Because I'll be so confused and disorganized that I won't know what to do. So I brought myself into that shoe. Then I understood what the brother was passing through. You see, that's the only way you can give a righteous judgment. That's the only way you can give a righteous judgment. Sit down and say, if it was me. If it was me. You know David. He said, that man must die. He didn't even think about it. And Nathan said, that's a good judgment, David. Now I'll tell you who the man is. He said, yes. He called some soldiers to go and get the man. He said, you are the man. I am the man. You are the man. And the man took his crown down. Threw a stick and everything. Came down and flat on the ground. And said, the Lord is righteous. See? If he had taken time to wait before he pronounced judgment. But you see, God allowed that to happen so that we who are quick to speak may know that we may be quick to put ourselves in trouble. See? So I thought about myself. This brother, his wife, just go. One month, two months, three. Ah, this brother is in trouble. How can he manage now? Like me going to the market to price yam. You know? I don't know what they're talking about it again. It's a long time I did that. Or I'm going to buy salt. Can you imagine you see me where I'm pricing pepper? Ah, uh, that's, some, that's something else. And then in the, at home, at home I'm cooking. And somebody wants to see me. I'm frying, uh, you know, I'm frying pepper or do, do something. Somebody's waiting in the parlor to talk with me. How about, I thought of so many things. So, you see, this is why Paul was saying, if they can, but it's not everybody that can. As a matter of fact, there are some people that if their wife run away, oh, they say, not many patris, every said this, they'll be so glad. Then they come and see Brother Gabe that they want to marry. You know? It's correct. Some people are like that. You know, they, have, they don't love their wife. They don't. See, if they do, you won't think of another. In fact, if you really love your wife, if your wife die, you won't even think of marrying another. See? Before you think of marrying another, it will take a couple of years see, to show respect and prove to your wife that you love her. See? But there are, there are people who, I don't know how you people live who, I don't know. Yeah? I don't know how you people, some people live. Let me not say what I want to say. It may be misunderstood. But notice, I told this brother, just let me pray for some time, you can go. And uh, we prayed and, and uh, got an answer. But see what Paul is saying in verse 9. To those that are unmarried and widows. See? Now here is an unmarried man. Is that right? And here is a widow. A woman that has married before and the husband is dead. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to born. If they cannot contain, let them marry. Contain what? If they cannot contain the desire, the desire for a woman, the desire for the for a man. See, if they cannot contain, let them marry. Now somebody said, but Brother Abraham said the, the man should never marry again. I say, brother, which is better? This brother is burning. He's always masturbating. One time or the other, he is around the Good Evening Street. Huh? He is, he sits in his house. His heart is full of sin. He sits in the bus. His heart is full of sin. He's in his house. He is in office. The heart is full of sin. Him alone sitting in the house. His heart is full of sin. I say, is that not First Corinthians chapter seven and verse nine? He's just burning for desire, burning for desire, burning. That man should better get married and settle down and don't defile himself and put the church of God to shame. See, 
That man should be married. We know about the Roman Catholic priests. They are told not to marry. That's the law. Not because they choose not to. But they are bound by doctrines of devils. I see them born more than dogs. See? Some of them have children. It's true. I know some Catholic priests who have children. Is that a church then? And then some women come for for confession and they sit behind the bedroom. That thing like I don't know what. And then they say, Well, I did this and I did this and I did this and I did this. The person you are talking to did the same thing. See? He himself knows he did the same thing. So isn't that a bundle of mess? How does a sinner forgive a sinner? See? There is a better person clean enough to clean us up. None of us can clean the other. See, if you are not guilty of this, you are guilty of quick temper or lying or cheating or proud. There is one thing that condemns you or defiles you. See? Pardon and mercy comes from God alone. So it is wrong. For him, here is a man that has automatically become unmarried. It is the worst condition. A man that was married and is no more married. It's more painful. It's better you are not even married at all. See? Because if you have been married and you enjoyed the services of your wife, you come back, your food is ready, your clothes are washed and ironed, the house is cleaned out, and you're welcomed, and you know, that uh, uh, softness of a woman uh, encourages you. Let me tell you something, brother, if you don't know. God is a very wonderful God. See? As we all are here now, you can tell one of my children to cut that palm tree. Because we are all men, you see him lurching up and down, folding his trousers and shirt, looking for a knife and so forth. But if there were about three girls around here, and you say, Brother P, cut that uh, palm tree, and you look around, there are girls. If there is no knife, he use his hand. <laughs> Just for the women to say, This man is tough. <laughs> see? It's true. So it is in the home. See? And then God gives us these women with this their soft tenderness. They encourage us. See, they make you strong when you're weak. That's true. They help you. But that feminine voice that renews your strength when you come back home, your food is ready, everything is cleaned out, and you lay down and they come and scratch you small at the back and ask you how is job today. I mean, you, your strength is renewed. You feel like a king. See, when you have a good wife, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. There are bad wives, so there are bad wives. When you return from work, they come here and say, "The money I ask you, in the money you don't give me." Oh, Abi, you don't bring them now. Nonsense. Some people they work, some people just they will suffer for nothing. Oh my God, <laughs> nothing can be so terrible. When a uh, <laughs> when a wife a wife insults the husband, it's so painful. And our wives know that God forbid us beating them. Now, if you are the type that beat your wife, that thing will meet you at the judgment day. If you see your wife has turned to a tiger, put your shirt and run. Run. Go away from the house. Don't stay and argue. Go. Just run. You are being wise. After some hours, you come back and say, is the food ready? <laughs> you see that everything is settled. But if you want to stay back and show that you are the head of the house, the devil will put you to shame. See? So be careful. To show the woman that you are mature that she is. Watch when she's happy and when she's sad. And do all you can to create an atmosphere in your home that will, the Holy Ghost will reign in. So you see, uh, it says, I say this by permission, that it is better for a man to marry than to born. It's better for a woman to marry than to born. Born there, you know what I mean. Yeah. See? Your heart is always full of desire. You see a girl pass. You look, 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 look. Ah, ah. And the woman is going her own. He doesn't even know you're looking. You look, 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 look. Somebody talking to you, not listen again. Look, 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 look. See? Inside your heart, you know how you're burning. You're burning. It's better you just have your own wife and kill that flame. Because that, with that flame there, you will never be pure. You will never be pure. Your eye will be full of adultery. Your mind will be full of sin. Your thoughts will be full of, of uh, uh, filthiness. 
you will never be clean. That's why Paul said, I say this by permission. It's better to marry than to burn. But everyone has to go as his own uh, gift of God, the proper condition. See? You discuss your problem with your pastor. Discuss it. Discuss it. There are some people who have put themselves in unnecessary problem, you know, by going into what we call in Lagos secret engagements. Secret engagements is a terrible thing. Marriage is an honorable thing. Why go in secretly? Why? You know, in Lagos, we have more brothers than we have sisters. So we have our only two church order. You will see it where Abraham said it all, but we say this is our, our own. It's our own. Brother Abraham in church order said, this is for my church in Jefferson Villa. If you people want to accept it there, it's fine. If not, don't worry, it works for us here. So we in Lagos have our only two church order. Amen? Amen. About marriage. It has been working for us too. See? Now if you want to get married, brother, you see a sister you want to get, pray first. Pray, brother, pray about it. Don't just count your money between don't reach the three thousand. You say if I use one thousand for this and then one thousand, I'm ready for a wife. And then you come and see anything in flesh in skirt and blouse interest you. Anything in skirt and blouse. Oh brother, please. Take time to pray. Take time to pray. And after that, one man says when if you want to get married, open your eyes very wide. Then after you get married, close it. That means a lot. Open your eyes, oh, very well. Then after you marry, close your eyes. Don't see anybody else. So, if you are ready to get married, the first thing you do, discuss with your pastor. After all, natural things teach us spiritual things. Go to your pastor. I want to get married. Pray with me. You know, and you all pray together. See? Uh, do you, any of the daughters of God that interest you? Oh, yes, such and such a person. Okay? Pray about it. Then we pray about it too. Then you find out if she has been engaged to anybody. So that you don't spoil your brother's joy. This sister you are interested in may be engaged to another brother. See? And the poor brother is praying seriously, trusting the Lord. And when he remembers the little girl is so happy that God has blessed him with a wife to be. And then here you come with all the coat and tie long to that to, to the knee. See? And then the, come to the sister guru. And the sister say, wonderful. So this type of people still there, they look for me. And then he forgets the other poor brother. See? And then starts dealing with you. Then after fellowship, the brother says, sister, can we discuss a little something? Say, no, I'm in a hurry. We'll see you tomorrow. In a hurry, say yes. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, the brother goes, thinking, ah, what kind of hurry is this? <laughs> and then, small time you see the other brother come near and then you are no more in a hurry. Then they begin to talk. And the brother is looking from far. Ah, he says he's in a hurry. This is not the hurry again. Though. You know? You have destroyed that little brother's joy. So that is why we guard against such. Because women are easily deceived. Very easy. A, a sister can agree to marry this brother quietly. Nobody knows anything about it. Only two of them. The brother moves with his foot run. You know? You know foot run? He has only two tires. <laughs> foot run, not motorcycle, no. I mean the foot run. And then the other brother comes with his car. Vroom, piam, come out with all the coat. And then which sister wants to follow foot run? When motor day? Uh, even like you come. Let's be honest. Who wants to suffer? See? So we want to stop that. Stop that temptation from coming in the first place. Go to your pastor. I'm interested in Sister B. Oh, Sister B is engaged to Brother uh, S. Please, forget about her. Okay, praise God, you go and pray about it. Don't say if not the Sister B, you're no more going in the rapture. Why? See? And then you pray about it. And then go again. Oh, Sister so and so. Okay, we talk to Oh, yeah, she's free. Uh, sister, are you ready to get married? Oh, yeah, I've been praying about it. Okay, there's a brother interested in you. And then call both of them. Be a witness. And both of them agree before you. It can't be changed anymore. Yes, and it's no more a secret. Yes, and then if there's something wrong with the sister also or the brother, you let them know. The moment they agree to marry, you say, wait, I'm going to ask you again whether you are ready to marry. 
this sister has told me that uh, she had a baby when she was in the world. This sister has told me she this and that and that and this and this and that. So brother, think about it. And the sister, this brother has told me this, this and that about his life. That, this, this, this and that. Think about it for a minute. Both of you come back in two weeks time. And uh, by then you would have considered uh, and see whether you still love yourself. And then the brother comes and says, Br brother, God forbid bad thing. <laughs> I know what my... God forbid bad thing. He says, yes. <laughs> I say, I'm sorry for you, brother. You know what? That's exactly what the Holy Ghost will do for you. Because you are given an opportunity to do the works of God and you failed woefully. It shows you yourself have not received mercy. That's true, brother. Let me tell you, God don't make mistakes. No, 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 no. See, you, you claim to be holy, to be pure, to be clean, God will try you. Prove it for me, let me see. And then you say, no, I don't want that. Okay, go then. And then the next day, you know what happens? Then one snake, one snake, they get little kids, then come inside the church. Praise God! Oh, this special number. And then the brother don't die, finish. And then he comes back to the pastor. Oh, sure, she's free. Sister, are you thinking about marriage? Oh, yes, brother, I've been praying about it. So, two of them. Okay, this sister has been. She's clean inside out. Brother, are you interested? Yes, brother, praise God. I have two of you go. Then after three months, you discover the marriage is snake. Oh, yeah. I've seen that many times. Sure. See, I'm going to teach on this book when we come back. It will show you some wonderful things. That it's not the flesh, but the spirit that we should marry. Amen. That's what we should preserve, not the flesh. Amen. And then when God gives you his daughter cleaned out by the Holy Ghost, Amen. you want the one that is clean in the flesh and, and wrong in the spirit. Okay, you get it. You have yourself to settle that later. One brother came to me, I want to marry sister so and so and so. Okay, get the sister together, we talk and talk and talk. And after we talk, <clears throat> I said, well, this sister has confided in me that... Uh, while she was in the world, ignorant, <clears throat> some um, some man deceived her, and, you know, while she was in school and she had a baby and so forth and so forth and so forth. But never was married, never was married. Now she's born again, a child of God, are you interested in her? The brother said, look, I love her. That's all I know. See, I just love her. I mean, what about uh, the child? I said, I don't know about the child, but I love her. I look at him. I said, brother, you can go. And they left. I put my head on my on my table and said, God, I thank you. Amen. This is the mind of Christ. Amen. That's a good Amen. picture of Christ and his church. You that can't forgive somebody and you want to be forgiven. Will you be forgiven? Some of us men, look, some of us are so bad, worse than the women. Well, because we are men, we are pretending to be... Don't let God expose you, honestly. Let's have the mind of Christ. So what we are trying to say is the conditions upon which a man can remarry. If the wife dies and he can stay without marrying, he has not seen. If the uh, wife dies and he can, is burning too much, he should marry. If he's a woman, she should marry. Period. And then the Bible talks about somewhere here in verse 15. And if they don't believe in the part, many have asked me that. If they don't believe in the part. If the unbelieving man depart from his wife, what is going to happen? It's true that the scripture there says they are no more bound. The brother is no more under bondage. What bondage? The marriage bond. The marriage bond that both of them exchanged. The scripture says it is nullified. See, because a believer and an unbeliever cannot be equally yoked. See, cannot be equally yoked. But in verse uh, uh, verse 10 and 11, And unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. Now he's not talking about the believer and unbeliever. He's talking about two believers. Two believers. Both of them are believers. But uh, certain circumstances come up in the home that disorganize the home. Like I told the story in Brabram's Tabernacle, 
both of them were believers and then they, they separated but after a long time they saw the foolishness of separation and they all came back again and they, they remarried see that's what the bible is saying let her stay unmarried or be reconciled to her husband but the next verse 15 says unbelieving it's mentioned there specifically amen when the unbeliever departs from the believer there is no hope of that person coming back when the unbeliever departs i am not saying that the scripture is saying that when the unbeliever departs the bible did not say make you stay and then reconcile to the believer it says they are no more bound together they are no more bound together and of course what happens is the moment the unbeliever departs, they go and marry yeah and then the christian brother is there wondering what am i to do shall i marry shall i not marry and so on and so forth and those of them who are not strong enough go back to the world because they keep burning and burning and burning and cannot control their desire and that's the way they were made but i believe the holy ghost is given to us to control our desires Amen. to control ourselves to give us some self-control so the two verse 10 and 11 and verse 15 are not saying the same thing we must know that they are not saying the same thing verse 10 and verse 11 is talking about two believers who live together and separate there is a hope of their reconciling amen, amen. but verse 15 is talking about a believer and an unbeliever in fact in verse uh, uh, in verse uh, 13 and the woman which had an um, a, a, a husband that believed not is that right yeah. the condition of their staying together is if he be pleased to dwell with her is that right yeah. this woman is a believer the husband is not the only way they can stay together is if the man is pleased to keep the woman then they can stay i think you see because one is a believer and one is not the same thing goes to the woman in verse 14 for the uh, uh verse uh, yeah verse 14 the same thing and then brother abraham says go with your wife if you are happy with her in the message repeating the same thing that paul said here see so it is bad for us to give a generalized judgment see you don't know what the problem of the individual brother is you say brother abraham say you can never marry again never and the brother just crawled back like tortoise to his house and sit down and wonder can god be so wicked yeah? plus all these things i passed through yeah? which kind of thing be this and then the next day he sees uh, the woman that left her somewhere married having children and here he is yeah? supposed to be redeemed supposed to be born again supposed to be a child of god and here he's put into a cage burning away with desires we must give judgments as it affects individuals amen, amen. well I don't want to go uh, too further because I was expecting some questions, relevant questions to different uh, situations, but they didn't come, so I just leave it there. Look at verse uh, 20. Verse 20. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it, but if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also, he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price, be not ye the servants of men. Amen. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called, therein abide with God. Now, concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord. That's young ladies. Yet I give my judgment as one that had obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. I suppose therefore that this is good for the, for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. Are thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Some people are looking for a way to be free from their wives. We are told not to do that. Are thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. Huh? This is the man that is loose from a wife. 
You see, it is bad to give a generalized blanket judgment. If you are loose from a wife, he said, brother, how are we loose? The Bible says loose. I don't want to give any, any particular way of losing. The thing is that your wife is no more in your house. Huh? Provided you did not look for a way to kick her out. Are you bound to your wife? He says, don't look for a way. Don't look for a way to get her away. But if you are loose somewhere, somehow you are loose from your wife. If you marry, you have not seen. And if a virgin marry, she had not seen. Nevertheless, that's a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, and need so require, let him do what he will, he sinneth not, let them marry. Amen. 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 If you read from there to the end of that verse, to verse 40, it is not referring to a brother and a sister that are engaged. And when the brother sees that he cannot control himself, he carries the sister to bed in Uga. And then the Bible says, hey, you do anything. Where is, how, how did he say? If, uh, but if any man think that he behaved himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, and and need so require let him do what he will he seen it not <laughs> what did again brother won't do huh? <laughs> he seen it not he said sister you see he said do what you will that is wrong brothers that's not what he's talking about at all see what he's talking about there is based on the jewish custom because there the fathers have to decide whether their young ladies should marry or not. Either they dedicate them to God forever. They become what you call Nazarites unto the Lord. Or they permit them to marry. See? So if the young lady is growing up and the father's mind is not made up, he is now deciding she should marry, she should not marry. She should marry, she should not marry. He said, you shouldn't do that. You are behaving uncomely. See? If you see you are behaving uncomely to your virgin, then when she's matured and uh, up to age, because she must get up to age before she marries, the flower of her age, that's uh, the women's uh, circle, monthly circle. If she gets up to that age of her monthly circle, that shows she's matured, then you can let her marry. See, it's not talking about a brother engaged to a sister at all. At all, it's not talking about that. Now you can see also in verse uh, 37, Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but had power over his own will, and had so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin, do it well. So then, he that giveth her in marriage, do it well. But he that giveth her not in marriage, do it better. Is that right? Do it better. So it's something that the father has to decide. If he has a necessity to let the girl marry, fine, let her go. But if you can keep your vow that you've made that she will not marry and serve God all her life, better. So let those who don't understand that scripture understand it now. That you, and then teach others the same. That a brother engaged to a sister does not quote the scripture and go into error. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing a song of praise to the Lord. And then we are going to get ready for our... The house of God everywhere. We should know our responsibility. But the troublemaking, somebody has to do that one too. Because everybody will do the works of his father. Yes. Yeah. Amen. If your father is a gatherer of souls, you'll be gathering souls. Yes. If your father is a scatterer of souls, you'll be scattering too. Yes. I must tell you, church, that was a great message. Yes. I thank God Amen. that I heard it. True. That's food for my soul. And anybody that will hear such a thing and <coughs> it doesn't change you, nothing will change you, nothing. You are anointed for the last day. See, there's a special anointing that will fall on the last day. That one that says, Let him that is righteous be righteous still. Let him that is unrighteous be unrighteous still. No changing. I think that anointing has begin is beginning to fall. Because it will be at the last day. It will take place. And when you are stamped with one, you remain so. No matter what anybody preach, you are just what you are. Nothing changes it. You are stamped. That anointing is there. 
seed. But if you are a seed of God, of course, the word of God is too powerful to cut anything out that is not supposed to be there. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. So we thank God for that message. We should know our responsibilities. Some questions before we get into our study this afternoon. Uh, it says, uh, the question is, God created angels. Uh, now, did, did he create some to be holy and others unholy? Or did Lucifer sin of his own accord? That's a good question. See, God did not create one angel to be holy and one to be unholy. But God being omnipotent knows everything from beginning to end. He knows end from beginning. And the answer is so simple. No father has children and have some children to be obedient and others to be disobedient. Any such father? No, you just have your child and you love the child and you raise the child up and you watch the child and see what it becomes. And then the child grows up to be obedient son. Oh, you are so glad, you are so happy. Or the, it grows up to be disobedient. You are so disappointed. See? And so it is that God has also, the way he made angels is the way he made you. He created angels as spirits. He created man as spirit too. But the difference is that he covered man with flesh. But the angels were left spirits. You understand? Amen. Huh. And then he gave the angels free moral agency, gave us the same thing. And then Lucifer on his own accord decided to be God. And you can't just be God. Huh? Something that somebody made can become more than his maker or equal to his maker. It's not possible. You see a car. A car is something that somebody made. No car can make another car. I don't care how expensive it is yes. or how rickety. It's something that somebody made and it, it ends there. It can't even be more than what it's made. There are some short people that would like to be taller. But the only thing they can do is want to be taller. That's all. You can't be taller. Yes. See? And there are others so tall that they, they can't find the size of their shoe in the market. They wish their leg was smaller. But all they can do is wish the leg is smaller. Wow. That's all. He can't make it smaller. So you have to see Brother Philip to give you a better, another measurement. <laughs> yeah. So whatever is made begins and ends with the idea of the maker. That's all. So Lucifer is something that was made. And he can't make himself more. He get into trouble. And that's where sin came from. The Bible said he was pure and holy when he was made until iniquity was found in him the day iniquity was found in him that's the day he began to fall and then he began to convince other angels how they would build their own empire you know it was a coup he planned a coup yes. let me tell you those angels of god are not pushovers yes. michael won't sit down there and watch that lucifer mess around god the throne of his of his god I mean, he moved the soldiers and they fought and kicked the man out. And that's the message this afternoon. Let the sons of God fight for the kingdom of our God. Sit around there, somebody come investigating you in and out. I mean, push him out and let's move forward. Amen. Amen. And the angels kicked him out of hell, out of hell, threw them down here. And when they were coming down here, the angels told us, "Woe to you on the earth! Woe to you! Have you read it before?" See? Woe to you down there. And somebody said, why are you saying woe? He said, because this man has come down. All his job is accused, accused and accused. We are sick and tired of him here. And since he came down here, we are in trouble till today. Yes. See, and we don't want him in this kingdom of God. Yes. In this family of God. Yes. We don't want him and his people. Yes. So God did not make any angel to be better than the other. But the angels had a right to choose. Like God has made you today, you have a right to choose to believe the gospel. Or not to believe it. It's left for you. Please explain about plating and braiding of hair. They are the same thing. It's just different grammar. Plating and braiding is almost the same thing. The difference is bobbing of hair. Bobbing involves cutting your cutting the hair. See? 
the original pattern of God is for the woman to leave her hair long to cover her head see and then because the, the African hair is always coily the only way they make it long is split it but the Bible says they shouldn't uh, make their uh, you know the plating of hair become a measuring a measuring rod for who is spiritual and who is not or who is rich and who is poor see they begin to brag about the hairdo until they put the horse tail to it they put uh, some wool black colored wool to the hair and it's longer than normal hmm? yeah. and then they turn it to whatever direction they want to and you plate one hair is 15 naira and the other one cannot play 15 naira one is so sorry for herself so she played uh, 2 naira one and she's ashamed and the one that played uh, 15 naira can leave it open for everybody to see the style that's nonsense see cover is simple they under, i mean you don't need a dictionary hmm? to know the meaning of cover true your hair is given to you for a covering cover the head brother it's simple People say, well, what is the meaning of head? And the Bible says the husband is the head. And they don't want to, they're just looking for an excuse to disobey. See? Just an excuse to disobey the simple instruction. Woman, cover your head with your hair. Yeah. Finish. Simple as that. Then somebody says, well, what about her tie? That's just an African custom. God never made a tie for anybody or cap. Those things are just our custom. And uh, there was nothing wrong with a woman putting on her tie, a man putting on cap. Nothing wrong. But if a man wants to pray, the Bible specifically says, don't cover your head. That's what makes us remove our cap when we pray. If the Bible did not specifically mention it, we'll wear our cap when we are praying. See, but the Bible says, take it off. And we simply obey. I'm yet to see a Christian, not a Muslim, because Muslims, they're not even in the show. No? <laughs> Except all these uh, bishops that are bigger than the word of God. See? I was watching Brother Dahosa one time in the TV. And uh, he was supposed to be preaching. And then we had one small cup here. And then one cross on the this thing. The man has turned to Pope. We thank God, yeah. <laughs> so when he was going to pray, when he says, In the name of the Father, somebody remove the cup. Somebody is standing at the back of somebody remove the cup. And, and then he talk, 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 he put the cup back. And then he says, In the name of the Lord Jesus, somebody remove the cup. And then he talk, 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 finish. Amen. The man put back the cup. She naked. <laughs> Just a way to disobey. <laughs> eh? Wow. Some people, some people, I don't understand. I will be too afraid to bring a cap behind the pulpit. Yeah. I will be too scared to do that. Yeah. All right. This other question. So uh, I want you to throw more light on this. You have heard of old that eye for eye, but I say unto you, I did not come to take away the law but to fulfill and the difference between the law and grace the application of the word of God in the time of law and now the time of grace and uh, be legalistic all right okay all right first uh, Jesus said the law was given to the Jews because of the hardness of their heart that's all and not only the law given people of divorce every law all the laws that God gave to Moses for them was because of their circumstances. They were very hard-hearted people. So God had to give them a law equal to their kind of heart. See? They don't know what something like your brother take you or slap you on the left you turn the other cheek. They will break the jaw of one another. <laughs> because they won't mess it at all. See? So the best thing is let them know how it feels. So when you give your bro brother a blow, the elders will bring it forward before everybody and get another rugged man to return the blow. And when they give you the thing, you say, my God, is that how it feels? And next time you, if you remember how it is, you won't give your brother a blow. See? So and then if you take your brother's good and the man cry to you tomorrow, you refuse to return. Then they come and catch you and bring one of your goat and give him. 
Then when you look at that goat and the man is going with it, you look at that goat, look at that goat, you will never touch another man's goat next time. You see, God made them know how it feels. But you see, today is different. We have the mind of Christ. Amen. See, God has given us self-control as a, a gift, uh, as a, a work of the Spirit of God in our lives. They did not have the Holy Ghost at all. See, they did not have the Holy Ghost. We have the Holy Ghost. Amen. And by the gift of this Holy Ghost, we can endure what they couldn't endure. Yeah. We can tolerate what they couldn't tolerate. We can forgive what they couldn't forgive. That's the difference. So legalistic is uh, living by the law. Do me, I do you. See? But grace is living by the mercy that we have received from God. We give it to another person. Uh, brother, please explain to me. When can one say that a brother and a sister are engaged? Is it when they have orally agreed to each other or when the brother has gone to the sister's place with some of the elders in process of dowry payment all right listen close the day you and that sister says yes you are engaged but that's spiritual that's spiritual now listen god made adam and eve spirits and they were husband and wife and they were one both of them was inside one adam but they were both spirits I want you to understand what I'm saying. Adam and Eve were made spirits in Genesis chapters 1. They were invisible to man, but they were in existence. Amen? Amen. And in that spirit form, two of them are married. They are husband and wife. Okay. Then when God formed the man and turned him into visible, tangible flesh, he was still carrying his wife there. Huh? Yes, and then God made him to sleep and perform the first operation yes, and brought his wife out yes, and brought his wife to him and then two of them recognized themselves yes, physically yes, huh? yes, before God there see that's not the day that they got married they were spiritually joined first yes, before the public joining the day Adam said this is the flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone and blah 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 there have been that long time. Yeah. So the day that you quietly, secretly, two of you exchange your vows and she agrees and you agree and both of you seal it up in prayer, spiritually you're bound. That's what God sees. You're bound. And then from there on, you proceed to the transformation to a public uh, agreement when everybody knows what's happening. So it's not the day you carry up and wine. To those that drink and wine. You know, the Bible says, give and wine to those that. Uh -huh, you don't want to bring anything, have you? Uh, some would have loved us to, to be free, but it's a pity. See, Jesus paid something for his wife, so you have to pay, brother. Yeah, you have to pay. Dowry to whom dowry is uh, due. Custom to whom custom is due. That's right. Is it right for a brother or a sister to be engaged with a thunder believer? I have a simple answer to this. Can two work together except they agree? No. Mm. Well, all right. And if the brother or sister who is holding to the truth later realizes that she or he is not supposed to marry a false doctrine believer can he or she break the, the vow and stay away from marrying the person i believe uh broken engagement is better than a broken marriage i believe that see but uh, i wouldn't say break the vow the poor girl may not even know the difference between left and right She's just following whatever the preacher says. See? But if you can sit her down and show to her that this is the truth, this is not the truth, and then give her an opportunity to decide. Don't judge her in absentia. And say, well, she's a thunder believer. What do you mean by that? See? Is it not the brothers that cause the trouble? <laughs> Who 
don't have the thunder. <laughs> is it not a brother? Uh, sit her down and teach her the other way. Amen. See? I'm sure she will see it and she will follow. If she loves you. If she loves you. Alright. Can a man whose wife committed adultery divorce her and marry another woman based on Matthew 5.32? Can somebody read Matthew 5.32 for us? Did he say uh, you can divorce and marry another? I hope... Huh? Brother, your name not there here. I don't know whether you are planning something or <laughs> Let's ask Matthew very well. Yes, yes, read. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put her, put away his wife, mm -hmm. save it for the cause of fornication, mm -hmm. also not to commit adultery. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed adultery. Did Matthew 5 32 say so? No, no, he was talking about fornication. See, here is a sister, you know, it's, it's still men that cause the trouble. It's still we men. See, and then here is the woman, you go and see, 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 on the way. And the poor girl thinks a human being is calling. And then she comes and you dribble her up and down and finally dump her somewhere. And the mercy of God finds her and she believes the message, cleaned out and sanctified and so forth. And then you marry her. And then maybe you are the type, the CID type. Yeah. And then you cover all your own iniquity. And say they are buried in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> that is your own. And then after your own is buried that nobody can see it in the blood of the Lord. Then you bring shovel and digger. <laughs> to, <laughs> to see. Bring caterpillar. Bring out all the iniquity of another person and show it in the sun. Because you want to marry another. Hmm? Maybe the sister uh, one day tells you something you don't like. He said, by the way, there is something Brother Abraham said I want to ask you. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is something God said too that he will ask you. So brother, it's not adultery. There is a difference. Adultery is a woman that is married and not faithful to her marriage vows. That she goes to meet another man. That's adultery. Fornication is a single girl that is not married at all, doing the same thing. So they are not the same thing at all. I hope that is understood. It doesn't do any saint any good. Let me ask you, church. When Jesus was looking for a wife, when he was here on earth, can you show me one scripture where Jesus asked anybody and said, listen, you want to follow me? He said, yes, confess all your sins. Oh, yeah. Can you find one? No, when he sent the apostles, he said, go give them the good news. What makes the news good? Our sins are forgiven. That's, that's it, brother. Unless the thing is not forgiven. If it is forgiven, then it's not even there. Forgive means you didn't do it. Forgive before, to give it before. I don't know how to explain that. See, before, it's a short form of before, to give before. Forgive. In other words, you are restored to the condition you were before you did Amen. that. Amen. See? You are forgiven. It's not done anymore. But there are some people who have not, they don't even know what Christianity is all about. They don't understand what new creation is. New creation. Brand new. How can you find fault in a brand new creation of God? How can you find fault there? Let's stop this nonsense, church. Is either the word of God is true or it's not. See, I am redeemed, I am redeemed, I am redeemed. Yes, if you are, she is too. Amen. See, and then you, you cover up your, all your own in the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> See, but the, the sister's own is, is not covered. Abba, no, 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 no. Some people have done such a damage in this message that they are trying to make the grace of God without effect. No, there will be some people in the land that will stand for truth. Yes. See, and speak out. Don't yes. care if there are just two or three. That's yes. enough. Yes. Elijah was alone. Yes. See, and said, come to me and hear the different story. Yes. See, but Abraham stood alone against all denominations. The people that are troubling the truth today are not people outside the truth. They are right inside. Yes. When they talk about canker worm and locust, before this canker worm and caterpillars eat anything, they go inside that thing and become part of that thing and change from different shape to another shape 
Caterpillar can come one local. It's the one insect. Oh. Yeah. One insect. Changing, changing, changing. Like the, 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 the horse rider. Yeah. The yeah. same old devil. Yeah. Changing color so that you don't know he's the person. He's still him. Yeah. Yes. The people causing confusion in all the churches are this. Just the same locust and caterpillar and canker worms. But let me tell you, God promised to restore. Amen. Restore Amen. everything. Amen. Every false doctrine like the Holy Ghost was telling us today, when truth comes, the force will pull back. Amen. When light comes, darkness will go. Amen. Wonderful. And the time for the truth to come has come. Amen. Time for the truth to come has come. You, you young men in all churches, don't be bench warmers. See, don't be bench warmers. The devil give you jobs because you're not working for the Lord. See, when you get busy for the Lord, you won't have time for all this uh, investigative Christianity. Huh? You won't have time for that. I'm going to teach out of this little pamphlet here called The Ark. The Ark. Maybe you read it when you go home. The Ark. And uh, there is something important in the Christian life in this last day that every believer must be setting off and the prophet preached a message on being setting of God. Be setting of God. The sisters meeting. I will have some little papers here for the sisters meeting coming up in May. May 25. So if any minister would like to take one or two, that would be fine to get the sisters to know and get ready about it. Well, let's stand together again and just whisper prayer to the Lord and then we can approach this message.